And you turn your Bible to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 12. Solomon said, I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good while they live. Last month, I think I discussed about happiness. Yes. Right? You remember? Yes. This afternoon, I'll be talking about doing good works. But, Sammy Solomon, nothing better for men than to be happy and to do good. Why? <coughs> Before we move on to our topic this afternoon, we'll take a quick review of the seven keys to true and real happiness from the pages of the Bible. Number one, happy are those who trust in the Lord. Right? If we trust God, we are happy. Why? Because it gives us peace of mind. Second, happy are those who keep God's laws. Those who are obedient to God, they are happy. Sometimes, you know, I think most of the time, after we come and worship God on a Sabbath, when we go home, on our way home, do you feel happy? Yes. yes. There's a sense of happiness. As we walk home, as we travel back to our own houses, we feel happy. Because we keep God's laws. Happy are those who find godly wisdom. Sometimes you come and attend churches, then you learn something. You learn something new from the, no, from the ministers. So, you are happy. Because you find God in this. Number four. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven. I think we ought to be happy if God forgive our sins. We are free from the slavery of sin. Happy are those who are being corrected by God. If God is correcting us, is disciplining us, we need to be happy. Why? Because God loves us. Number six, happy are those who are facing trials of many kinds because it develops perseverance. And the last one, okay, the last one on my list, okay. Number seven, happy are those whose God is the Lord. Happy are those whose God is the Lord. Because we are worshiping the one through God. So this afternoon, we'll talk about doing good works. For our first uh, Bible verse, can it turn to Proverbs 3? <coughs> chapter 3, verse 27. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it, when it is in your power to act. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it, when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later, I'll give it to you tomorrow, when you now have it. Let's go to a Bible example about this. Kindly turn your Bible to Acts chapter 3. We we'll start reading in verse 1. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. 
Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple court. So there was a crippled man who was from birth. So every day he goes there to, to beg. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Siyempre, ha? He asked them for money. He asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him. As did John. So both John and Peter looked straight at his eyes. Then, Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. So, okay, how much are you going to give me? I don't know. Yeah. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have. But what I have, I give it to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he held him up. And instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping. Crippled from birth right now is walking and not only walking, but jumping up and down and praising God Almighty. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what, at what had Happen. So many people were there. And Peter gave a very powerful sermon on that day. It's a very long sermon. Okay, you can read it at the comfort of your home. It's from uh, verse 11 to 26. Okay, so we'll skip that. So please read it at the comfort of your home. It's a beautiful sermon by Peter. Let's go to chapter 4 this time. Let's continue the story. Chapter 4, verse 1. The priest and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. So while Peter and John were talking to the people, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So what did they do? They seized Peter and John. And because it was evening, the Bina, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. A number of men grew to about how many? 5,000. Kind of powerful amazing <coughs> 5,000. Some people believed, but some people wanted to put them into jail. See? What? Now, the next day, <coughs> The rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. So the meeting time. Annas, the high priest, was there. So was Caiaphas, also a high priest at the time. John, Alexander, and the men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Ito miracle na ito. You made uh, this man, this crippled man walk. 
By what power or name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we were being called to account today, for what? For an act of kindness. What are they being, ano, anong ina-account sa kanila? Sabi ni Peter, an act of kindness. In other translation, act of good deeds. If we were being persecuted for this act of good deeds, of good works, <coughs> today, okay, if we were being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a crippled man, and are asked how he was healed, then know this one. Okay, sabi niya, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Okay, quoting from the Old Testament, salvation is found in no one else, but there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. In Hebrews chapter 6, Verse 10, we read. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. God is not unjust. God is very just and righteous. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people <coughs> and continue to help them. See, we help other people. We are showing our love for them. Let's read it one more time. <coughs> God is not unjust. He will not forget your good works and the love you have shown Him as you help His people. And continue to help them. Verse 11. We want each of you to show this same diligence. What do you mean by diligence? Effort. Careful and lack of effort. To the very end. In order to make your hope sure. We are all hoping to enter the kingdom of God. We are all hoping to be part of God's holy family. So we need to continue to do good works. We do not want you to become what? Lazy. But to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Example of Peter and John. They do good works. Okay? They heal a crippled man from birth and spread the gospel of the kingdom of God and convince thousands of people to come to Christ, to come to repentance and to accept Christ as their personal Savior. In Proverbs 2, 22, verse 9, a generous man will himself be blessed. For he shares his food with the poor. A generous man or a woman will be blessed. Sabi dito. Sabi ng God. For he shares his food with the poor. I'll share with you also a true story this afternoon. One day, a poor boy was selling goods from door to door to pay his way to school. Found he had only one dime left in his pocket and he was 
hungry. He decided he would ask for a meal at the next house. So when he knocked at the door at the next house, maybe I'll ask for something. <coughs> However, he lost his nerve when a lovely young woman opened the door. <coughs> Instead of a meal, he asked for a drink of water. Can I have a glass of water, please? The lovely lady thought, look, thought he looked hungry. So he brought him a large glass of milk. The boy drank it slowly, then asked, How much do I owe you? You don't owe me anything, she said. Mother taught us never to accept payment for kindness. <coughs> then the boy said, Then I thank you from my heart. That little act of kindness made a mark on his heart and he and made him feel stronger and better. Years had passed. And the young woman became seriously ill. The local doctor was kind of baffled of her case. So she, they sent her to the hospital in a big city. A specialist is needed to study her rare illness. So they consulted Dr. Howard Kelly. Howard Kelly is a famous gynecologist who founded the Gynecology Oncology Division at John Hopkins University. When Dr. Kelly heard the name of the town where the patient came from, he immediately went to see the patient and recognized her at one glance. Determined to save her, he went back to the consultation room and did his best to save the life of the woman who once made a difference in his life. After a long battle, the lady was cured of her sickness. Dr. Kelly requested the hospital accounts to forward the final bill to him for approval. He looked at it and wrote something on the bill and sent it and had it sent to the woman's room. The woman got the bill, was afraid to open it. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid to open the bill. For, for she was so sure that the cost is too high and would probably take all her life to pay for it. Finally, after an hour or so, she had the courage to have a look at the bill. As she opened the statement, for the bill at the hospital. Something caught her eye on the side of the bill. She read, she read these words, paid in full with a glass of milk. In Hebrews 13, verse 16, we read, Do not forget to do good. Do not forget to do good. And to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So every time we do good, God is happy. God is pleased. 
In Romans chapter 12 verse 12, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. <coughs> Practice what? Hospitality. What is hospitality? Hospitality is defined as the friendly and generous reception of visitors or strangers. <laughs> friendly and generous reception. You welcome strangers into our lives. You know? Hospitality. Anong command? Share with God's people who are in need and practice this time, we'll take a, a beautiful story recorded in the Holy Scripture. This account can be found in 2 Kings chapter 4. The wife Elisha, the prophet, went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman, so we kaya itong babae, well-to-do, okay, was there. She urged him to stay for a meal. Diba? Practice hospitality. So whenever he came by, whenever Elisha will pass through that town, he would he stop there to eat. So the invitation is open. Elisha would not go there, come without invitation. So no, the invitation is open. Every time you come, you know, up, you, know you come by, drop, please drop by our house and enjoy a meal with us. So okay, no, okay, Elisha. Okay? Happy now is Elisha. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. So I am young lady, the holy man she <coughs> Let's make a small room on the roof, okay? And put in a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp for you. So he may like to read something, he may like to write something. Okay, so let's put up a room for this man of God. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. Diba? Hospitality may yes or no? Yes. Yes, yes. very kind. Diba? Open your door or room or your door to pay strangers. Before we continue the story, let's go to Hebrews. Chapter 13, verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. Yeah. Here, here again. Do not forget. Palaking ganon. Every time about doing good, most of the time is do not forget. Do not forget to entertain what? Strangers. For by doing so, so, but, so, for by so doing, some people have entertained what? Three angels without even knowing. Them. This time, this lady, well-to-do lady, he was entertaining the prophet of God, Elijah. Okay? So let's go back to the story. If you remember the verse. Verse 11. Okay, chapter 4, verse 11. One day, nakay may bantay Monday ngayon, one day, isang araw, when Elisha came, he went up to his room 
and lay down there. So I need to have relax Elisha. He said it to his servant, Gehazi. Called the Shunammite. So he called her. And she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, you have gone all you have gone to all this trouble for us. You, know, you have made a room, you, have, you know, purchase a bed, do all these things for us. Now, what can be done for you? What can I, how can I repay you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? Maka may request ka. I can talk to the king, if you like. Kasi prophet siya, I can easily talk to the king. There's no surprise here because they can read everything here. Okay. She replied, I have a home among my people. See? So she's happy. So, I don't reply? No. No, thank you. Okay, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her? Elisha asked. What can be done for her? I don't know where. Sabi no servant, well, she has no son, and her husband is old. Wala siya anak. Ah, okay, maybe. Sabi ni Elisha, maybe. Okay, we can do something for her then. Ha? Then Elisha said, call her. And she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. Oh, no, my lord. <coughs> she objected. Don't mislead your servant, O oh, man of God. Don't give me hope. Don't give me hope. Okay. But the woman became pregnant. And the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son. Just as Elisha had told her. So, nakaroon siya na anak. The child grew up. Okay? The child grew. Then one day, he went out to his father, who was with the reapers, out in the, into the field. My head, my head, sabi ng bata. He said to his father. His father told a servant, carry him to his mother. After the servant has lifted him up and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. The boy died. I don't know what happened to, his, to him. There was a severe headache. About noon time, the boy died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. So, iniwan doon sa Benny, Elisha. And the woman went out. So, what, did, what she did next is a bit surprising. Alright? She called her husband and said, what did she say to her husband? Please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go to the man of God quickly and Return. She did not even tell the husband that the son is dying. You know? Ang sabi doon sa husband, I just need a servant and a donkey. I want to see the man of God. So, nagtaka yung husband. Why go to see him? Di ba? Today. He asked. Why do you want to see the man of God today? It's not a new moon or a Sabbath. Why do you want to see the man of God today? They are very strange, Salina. It's all right, Salina. Hanggang yan, di ko na sinasabi pa tayo ng anak nila. Okay, it's all right, Salina. So, may, may great faith, ha, this girl, ha? Great faith. He does not want to worry 
her husband. Because he's old now, you remember? The husband is already old. So very considerate itong babae niya. Does not want to worry her husband. She wants to talk to the man of God. Okay? May faith siya. May faith. It's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. Let's go. Sabi niya doon sa servant. <coughs> so she set out and came to the man of God. Where is the man of God? At Mount Carmel. Nandun pala siya. Si Elijah. Nandun siya sa Mount A. Mount Carmel. When he saw her, when he saw her, in the distance, nakita niya malayo pa lang. The man of God said to his servant, Gehazi, Look, there's the Shunammite. Oh, lady, the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Tanoy mo, ha? Is your husband all right? Is your son all right? Alam ng Elisha, may problema. May problema. Ba't pumunta yun? Shunammite girl sa kanya. Either siya may problema, husband niya may problema, or anak niya. Kaya tatong tanong, is she alright? Is her husband alright? Is her son alright? Everything is alright. She said, patay na anak, but ang reply mo, reply? Everything is alright. When she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Inalo niya yung kapat paa niya. Gehazi came over to push her away. Okay? But the man of God said, Leave her alone. She is in bitter distress. But the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Diba? Sanon ng prophet, God will tell him why. Diba? But this time, the Lord did not tell him why. Okay? So, hindi alam ni Elisha ano problema. Diba? Okay. Let's continue. Verse 28. Did I ask you for a son? My Lord, did I ask for you? Did I ask you for a son? She said, did not I tell you, don't raise my hopes? Sabi sa man of God. Man of God. Elijah said to Gehazi, Tuck your cloak in your belt. Okay? Take my staff in your hand and run. Tak mo kagad. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. And if anyone greets you, do not answer. Let my staff Lay my staff on the boy's face. Ano instruction? Run and put the staff on the boy's face. Okay, then instruction. But the mother's, but the child's mother said, "As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you." So he got up and followed her. So Elijah went with her. Okay. Back to her house. Gehashi went on ahead. So, na una si Gehashi. And laid the staff on the boy's face. Okay? As it started. But there was no sound or response. Wala. So, Gehashi went back to meet Elijah and told him, The boy has not awakened. Patay pa rin yun. Bata. When Elijah reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. He prayed to God. Okay, so he was alone, and he prayed to God. Then he got on the bed and lay upon the boy, mouth to mouth, Eyes to eyes, hands to hands. Okay, lay on top of the boy. At 
as he stretched himself out upon him, the boy's body grew warm. Cold na eh. Matay na cold. But this time, getting warm na yung body ng bata. Elijah turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got on the bed and stretched out upon the boy one more time. Inulit niya. Okay? The boy sneezed how many times? Seven times. And opened his eyes. Elijah summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunamite. And he did. She came and he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. It's a beautiful story about doing good and about men. For closing scripture this afternoon, let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Let us not, what? Become weary. What is weary? Tired. Let us not become tired in doing good. Another translation of worry is lose interest. Let us not lose interest in doing good. So let us not get tired or lose interest in doing good works. For at the proper time, at the right time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. We should continue to do good works. Day in, day out. Don't get tired of it. Don't lose interest. Because at the proper time, we will be rewarded by God. Therefore, as we have opportunity. Do we have opportunity today? Do good. Tell me. Yes. Are we alive? Dead people cannot do anything. As long as we are alive. As long as we are living. As long as we have the opportunity. Okay? Let us do good to what? To all people. Especially to those who belong to the family of believers. On that, Blessed and joyful Sabbath, everyone.